Yeah. 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 We should talk about your theory. <laughs> we, we should not talk about my theory with Inception. I would paid seventy dollars for a therapy session on Inception. So, Anna, no, he had this whole theory. The point was the top never stopped spinning. I know. And you didn't see it. It did. So the end of Inception was like he spends this whole time. Well, I, Inception, I didn't get Inception. I didn't get Inception. <laughs> Oh! So what he realizes, like, it doesn't matter because he will never know what the truth is. I don't want to rewatch it to find out because I'm not. <laughs> I'll tell you, I'm not really that again. I was. <laughs> We're coming to you live from Geekdom, the epicenter of tech and entrepreneurship. Today on Channel 3, we have the latest on Bond. James Bond. Upcoming movies, local news. And last but not least, we'll talk about the latest updates in drone technology with Adam Dusenberry from White Cloud Drones. I'm Montana Meeker. And I'm Zari Chipman. And, and this, this is, is Channel 3. 3. In national entertainment news, this is a big time for the Bond franchise, which has announced development of a Bond game, the first since 2012, through the developers IO Interactive, who were also responsible for the Hitman franchise. The game will have an original origin story and no release window has yet been announced. Yeah, in fact, 007 changed the game by announcing the first female lead, Lashana Lynch. You know, and that's great to hear because it's been a hot second since we've had a female lead in a major action release, especially with Marvel's Black Widow getting pushed to next May. I'm really glad to see the new movie coming out. I'm also super excited for the new action movie, Wonder Woman 1984, scheduled for release on HBO Max this Christmas. And you know, Hans Zimmer, my favorite composer like of all time, is doing the soundtracks for both, so I am so excited for that. I love that man. He really? never misses. Nothing but bangers. In local news, Pabst Brewing Co. is bringing an organic arts complex to downtown San Antonio after relocating here in Texas. They want to create a 1.5 acre culture park to be housed in a renovated warehouse. This is going to include an indoor skate park, a bar, a rooftop movie theater, and a bunch of other stuff as part of the huge development. For more on this, check out the article in the SA Heron, which is a great source for downtown news. Military and commercial usage of drones has been gaining steady momentum in recent years. As the unmanned aerial vehicle industry expands into new arenas such as aerial photography, rescue ops, export shipping, and more, it seems everyone is just waiting for the FAA to loosen the strict legislations surrounding drone operations. You know, we aren't really sure what the future of drone technology holds, but for now, let's head to Seven to hear a few experts from White Cloud Drones weigh in on the topic. Thank you so much for coming today. Thank you very much for having me. So can you tell us a little bit about the different types of drones you have and use and what kinds of problems you guys solve? Sure, yeah, great question. So uh, White Cloud right now, and, and this is kind of the, the evolution of our, of our company as we kind of move into this now fifth year of existence, is that we first started uh, with the intent to provide commercial based applications. Mm -hmm. So whether that be uh, surveying, uh, mapping, uh, inspecting, uh, using thermal cameras to do anything that would help um, anybody on the ground have more of an affordable and accessible and safer way of, of providing that kind of data, we did. Um, unfortunately, here in San Antonio, that market just really wasn't as lucrative as what we had hoped, uh, but the market that was, was media production. And uh, I'm, I have a pretty extensive long background in media production, doing just very basic communication stuff for nonprofits and small businesses. But with the use of drones and with me using drones as an accessory tool uh, to enhance the quality of production, um, that's really where we became more of a, uh, that's where our, our skill set became more sharp. And I believe over the past, well, two years, media production within our revenue stream has really overtaken the actual, you know, direct drone applications. So we really kind of shifted more towards, uh, you know, assisting production companies uh, in doing all the aerial services. When companies come in from out of the country that don't have the licensing or the certification to be able to legally fly a drone, uh, it's always nice to be able to be called upon to provide those kinds of services. And of course, we're always on standby for all local companies, such as yourselves, if you guys ever need a, a legal drone uh, person out there flying whatever we, we need to, to to get the shot that you, you guys need. But uh, yeah, for you know, moving forward with a lot of those kinds of drones that we're using now, they're constantly evolving. Um, the uh, 
the kind of technology that people are now being able to study to enhance the evolution of unmanned aerial vehicles is getting to the point where it's virtually almost autonomous. Uh, at some point, everything's going to be controlled by a program that uh, someone's you know riding in the back of their of their truck, basically. UPS, uh, Domino's, uh, several other companies around the world are now using drones to either deliver services or products um, or assist in other kind of ancillary services. So you mentioned legal drones. So that's kind of an interesting facet of your business. What are some of the regulations surrounding sure. drone operations? Yeah, so um, right now, since 2015, for the past five years, the FAA, the uh, Federal Aviation Agency, um, Federal Aviation Administration, uh, has pretty much imposed a, uh, a certification process for commercial drone businesses. So uh, when I talk about legal drone flights, uh, that means that that person is certified, registered, and insured uh, to fly a drone for a specific job. Uh, so if you wanna make money with a drone, then you have to get certified. You have to go through the FAA's process of getting, you know, take your 60 question test, get certified, uh, and then you get your remote pilot UAS uh, Part 107 license or certi certificate. Uh, and, and with that, that um, that's at least a, a, a valid, credible document saying that you've done what you need to do to go through the right channels in order to fly a drone legally. Now, if you don't intend to fly a drone uh, for a business or for any kind of uh, commercial service, you don't need to get uh, that certification. You don't need to go through those, those channels. But there are very strict rules on where you can fly, how high you can fly, um, what you're doing with the drone, with the, uh, the overall intent. So there's a lot of things that really kind of go inside, coincide with, uh, with all of that. How has Community at Geekdom helped you in your journey and how has this helped your business grow? Geekdom has been the strongest common denominator amongst our growth uh, and our success. Um, as saying before, Geekdom has been such a profound, uh, it, it has such a deep well of resources, whether it be legal, accounting, uh, other businesses that have gone through a specific uh, you know, realm of experience, whether it be the first year of, of existing or the fifth year or even the tenth year, we've learned a lot from not just the people who work at Geekdom, but everyone who is members here at Geekdom. And I can't, I can't stress enough on just how important it is that uh, without the, uh, the connections that we have here, uh, the advocacy that we feel uh, that's behind us and that we're also projecting, uh, without all of those, we wouldn't, we wouldn't be able to survive the way that we are right now. So without Geekdom, <laughs> again, I, yes, we love it here. <laughs> Earlier we were talking about the future of drone tech and we'd love to get your thoughts about where this industry is heading. Sure. So. I, being or actually using drones uh, personally for the past 10 years uh, that's been a part of my passion and my hobby and, and now my full-time business, uh, looking at the evolution of how drone technology has really grown, it's looking as if everything is going to become more autonomous, um, it's going to become more smart. Um, a lot of the issues that I've always dealt with, a lot of drone operators have always had, is the fact that uh, the battery life is always very limited. Um, the security of the drone itself, meaning that uh, it, its ability to understand where it is in the proximity of other things such as trees or power lines or buildings, um, but also uh, being able to calculate all of the other variables such as wind, rain, snow, and all of the weather elements. And so all of these things that have slowly, I say slowly, it's actually fast, but in drone world tech uh, growth, it's, it's slowly becoming better and better. So looking ahead, uh, I would almost anticipate where drones become completely autonomous, uh, where in essence, like what you see with the AI that is driving our cars now, uh, it's gonna be flying our drones as well, whether it be delivering medical supplies or groceries or deliveries or providing a, a Wi-Fi hotspot for you know hurricane relief, disaster areas, or simply doing what we do a lot of, this is simple media production, being able to track specific subjects, follow them for an extended amount of time without being so drained by you the the power of the battery um, or the quality of the cameras. Uh, we all know that the quality of cameras are constantly growing and evolving and, and uh, the size of the sensor and the, the, the sensitivity of the sensors on the cameras really play a huge role on the, the weight of the payload that's on the drone. And of course that has a major variable to the, the amount of power the battery needs to have. So all of these variables that are constantly moving forward and growing, 
uh, I'm excited for the future of drones and excited to be a part of, you know, seeing when they first really came on, on the scene to consumers to how we're able to use them on a daily use now. Well, thank you so much for coming on, Adam. We really appreciate your input. Our guest speaker today has been Adam Dusenberry from White Cloud Drones. Thank you so much for coming on today. Thanks for having me, guys. Certainly appreciate it. Oh. <laughs> we're all, we're all. Camera Harris. Carmo, Carmo, three. Carmo. Carmo. Enjoy. And action. Three, two, one. Okay. Oh, wow. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Thank you for joining us. I'm Zari Chipman. And I'm Montana Meeker. And this is Channel 3. Tom Zimmer is doing the soundtracks for both of those, which is super exciting for me personally, since he's definitely my favorite composer. Wait, <laughs> Yeah. And action. Also, Hans Zimmer is doing the soundtrack. Soundtrack? Hans Zimmer, who is probably my favorite composer of all time, is doing the soundtrack, and so he's definitely gonna do a great job. I love that man. I, I love that man. <laughs> there you go.